Hello and welcome back to Under the Knife 2. I uh, just want to apologize in advance if I if I might sound a little a little off as I'm narrating. Um, I got a little bit of a seasonal allergy going on, um, so I did take my medicine before before I started recording. So hopefully that kicks in soon. <clears throat> Episode three for the future. This is the medication for BGS. Yeah, but it's not going to work on just anyone because of how it's designed. The one you got there is made specifically for that Mexican kid from Elysium. It's custom tailored to his DNA. That's great! This, that means Emilio can look forward to a full recovery. Hey, don't start celebrating yet. There could still be side effects. And make sure you pay close attention to his liver when you administer it. I hope this means we'll have medicine ready for Linda and the other patients soon, too. Thank you for your hard work, Victor. Although, it's problematic that each patient's medication must be custom-made. Looks like we made the right choice partnering with Acropolis Pharmaceutical. They should be able to help us. Actually, the variables are so limited, I'd say we don't even need them, but... Whatever, let's just let, let's just let them handle it. we still got that other problem to deal with. What problem? Damn it. Oh, for crying out loud. You forgot already? Remember that new strain of guilt that kid had? Is that ringing any bells? There isn't much to go on yet, but hey, now that I'm on it, it's as good as salt. Dr. Style. Ah, Derek. Hmm? Oh, hello, Miss Maizumi. I saw you on TV the other day. You did? Well, I watched it myself. I am so embarrassed. Nonsense. You looked great on screen. Really? So, what brings you by today? I came to request an operation. What? However, it's already been agreed upon, so I'm sure Director Hoffman will explain it to you later. Wait, what are you saying? Dr. Stein. I had this little idea while I was watching the operation on TV. I'd like to have you hooked up to a device that will monitor you during your next procedure. So you'd be recording my every move? But why? To research your techniques, of course. Really, superior skills like yours should be exhibited more openly. Think of, it the, think of the good it would do for all the young doctors, freshly entering the field. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. As long as that's the case, I don't mind. Thank you, Derek. So, what condition will I be treating? An aneurysm. A rather large one, in fact. It certainly won't be as easy as the operation you did on TV. The difficulty of the procedure doesn't matter. I always operate with everything I can give. I like this confident side of you, Derek. I'm still serious about wanting you in my company. You'd have a much easier job than you do here. And I could pay you more than double your current salary. Just one of many perks for you. What? Double? Excellent people have the right to be paid what they're worth. I've always believed that. I mentioned a director's chair, but I may even be able to make you head director. How about it? I still need some time to think about this. I'll be looking forward to good news after the operation then. See you later. Dr. Stiles! I'm against it! I'm totally against having you monitor during an operation. You'd be performing the procedure wired up to cameras and sensors. How could you even work? They'll just put excessive strain on you and raise the risk level of the entire operation. Angie, there's nothing I can do. I've already agreed to it. What? Doctor! Why do you always make these rash decisions? You need to be more aware of the fact that first and foremost, you are a doctor. I disagree. I am aware of that. But if what I do here can help other doctors, how can I say no? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell. I understand that you're worried, but I'll be okay. I can complete the operation, even with their devices on me. Well, let's see how that goes. We are going to be performing the operation soon. Acropolis Pharmaceutical referred the patient here. And according to the examination results, he is in critical condition. How bad is it, Angie? Well, there are numerous aneurysms inside his large intestine. And they're so swollen that they could rupture at any time. If we don't hurry and treat them, he could... Sounds pretty urgent. We should begin immediately. Yes, Doctor. The objective of this operation is to excise and... Excise the aneurysms and suture the blood vessels, or replace them with synthetic ones. That should do it, but... Not only do we have to excise the blood aneurysms and suture the blood vessels, we'll also need to use synthetic blood vessels for the larger ones. It's a lot to, deal, well, it's a lot to do all at once. 
There's no time. Let's begin. So, you might remember aneurysms, you might not, but... Let's begin the operation. It's alright. Yeah, what he said. Found what we need, so use this stuff uh, uh, to whittle it down, cut it out. Yeah, here we go again with the drain. Yep, that's a big one. This is where we need to add, a, a, add another step to this. And I don't mean more adding more sedative. Now we place this bad boy in there. One, two, three. Now when you get when you get in a situation like this where you can't uh can't see everything, you will need to, like, um, like, uh, like, do these one at a time, almost. Let's see if there's any more here. Nope. Okay, so it's these three. One, two... Oh no, it's worse. Just when things just when it seems like things are going so well, right? Alright, take that one out. Whittle that down. I'm gonna calm this one down a little bit too before I cut it before I cut it. Well, that didn't, that didn't work as planned. Let's try, there we go. I don't want these to burst, so. I think the most that can appear at once is four. One step at a time, one step at a time. I'm getting ahead of myself here. There we go. This can't be. I won't give up. This is an automatic healing touch. I will save this patient. Good enough. Oh, there is a fifth one. All right. My mistake. And that is that. Alright, so, uh, that was a little bit of a doozy, but we, we made it. That was truly amazing. Doctor. Thank you. Alright, there was a little, uh, there was also a bit of a, uh, just a short blurb where Maizumi is, uh, is, uh, making her own little observation of the, of the healing touch that now that we, you know, since we were hooked up, it, 
I managed to uh, pick up pick up uh, that as well in in the recording. That was an S rank, by the way. Are you kidding me? You must be out of your mind, Dr. Styles. I'm sorry. I've given it a lot of thought, and this is the conclusion I've reached. I'd rather be seeing my patients face to face than doing desk work in some cushy in some cushy office. I'm very grateful that you think so highly of me, Ms. Mayazumi. But this is how I feel. To treat people suffering from serious illnesses like Caduceus and make them smile again. That's my personal idea of success. <sighs> oh well. What a shame. But I guess this time I give up. I'm very sorry. Well, our organizations will still be cooperating, right, Doctor? I see no reason why the two of us can't continue to assist one another. Yes. Of course. If I can be of any help whatsoever, please don't hesitate to ask. And again, thank you very much for your offer. I look forward to continuing to work with you. Yes, well then, if you'll excuse me. Sure, I'll see you around, Doctor. Fool of a man. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. This wasn't exactly the plan, but I've already got the data I need on his healing touch. You are completely worthless to us now, Dr. Styles. That didn't sound good. All right, uh, there's no operation for this one, but we're gonna view it anyway because it's uh, because it's part of the story. Episode four, Elysium. Um, excuse me. Hola, Emilio. Medico, uh, Doctor Styles, Angie. Emilio, how have you been? You look much better. Dr. Stiles, Miss Thompson, thank you for taking the time to come. It's no problem. We wanted to help set up a treatment plan for Emilio. We've also brought him some medication for his PGS. Ah, so it's finally ready. This medicine that will save Emilio. Yes. I'm sure he'd recover without it, but this new medicine should truly cure him. You must be glad, Emilio. You'll finally be able to go back to Mexico. Thank you. Miss Ross, what's the matter? Even if Emilio returns to his country, he has no family there. He'd be saying that he wants to get a working visa and come back to America if he can. I see. Heather is very nice. I want to stay. Heather like a sister. Emilio. I'm glad they can both smile like that now. We should wait until he recovers his strength a little more before beginning this treatment. There's still the possibility of side effects, so we need to take all possible precautions. Not to be rude, but the medicine must be administered in a very specific way, so please follow. Miss Thompson, I actually have the same international license, license, nursing license that you do. If the instructions are there, then I would be happy to take it from here. Huh? Huh? Really? Wow, that's amazing considering how young you are. Hey, I got my license at that age too, you know. Oh, well, not really. It's nothing compared to what Miss Thompson has done. You think so? Of course, it's one of my dreams to become an assistant to an excellent doctor like Dr. Stiles. I'm sure it'll happen someday, Miss Ross. Dr. Stiles! Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, Doctor, most people just call me by my first name, so... If you don't mind, you can call me Heather. Oh, okay. Hey, you there! This is a restricted area, you can't be in here! Huh? What's going on? Yes, sir! Who, me? It is? Sorry, I didn't know! Which way is the ward? It's right over there. Where'd you come from, anyway? I just got lost. Sorry. Over there, you said, right? Hey! Doctor, didn't we pass by that man while we were in the ward earlier? Hmm, I'm not sure. Did we? Dr. Stiles! Oh, there's something I wanted to ask you about. What is it, Miss... Uh, Heather? It's just... The guilt that appeared in Emilio? It's been worrying me. I mean, I know you treated it, Dr. Styles, but... Heather? Yeah. You're right. Why, we had a... Why he had a relapse is still a mystery to us. But the research division at Caduceus is continuing to investigate the cause. He doesn't have any chiral reactions, though, so there's no need to worry. I see. They've even gone so far as to request my father's cooperation. Huh? They've involved Professor Blackwell, Angie? Yes. He knows more about guilt than anyone, so... I've heard about Professor Blackwell before, that he was threatened by Delphi and forced to research guilt. 
No matter what the circumstances, the sins he committed cannot be erased. But he believes he can atone for those sins through his heart and through his work, and that's what keeps him going. It isn't easy to keep living when you have to face such painful past every day. In that respect, I think you have a wonderful father. I'm a little jealous. Huh? huh? Anyway, I'm sure that Emilio will get better in no time, with all the support he's getting. Exactly. Let's keep our thoughts positive. Is there an open room available? Let's examine Emilio's charts. Alright, nice little callback to, uh, to Ken there. Alright, let's do one more. I'll call it for this episode. Episode 5, Familiar Faces. Oh, you weren't kidding. Huh? Hey, long time no see, Sybil. And Dr. Casal, you're here too. What brings you here into our neck of the woods? It's been a long time, Leslie. Looks like everyone's still here too. Hey, Sybil, is that... Is that your baby? Actually, yes. What? When did that happen? Congratulations, Dr. Myers. Doctor... <clears throat> Huh? Oh, that's right. You're Dr. Casal now. Don't worry about it. You can still call me Dr. Myers if that's where you're used to. Sybil Casal, age 37. Lead, an lead anesthesiologist at Hope Hospital and the wife of Dr. Greg Casal. Because of her abdominable spirit, her nickname was the Iron Vixen while she worked at Caduceus. Derek. It's been a while, Derek. So what do you think? Isn't she an angel? Greg Casal, age 38. Director of Hope Hospital. He was once Derek's mentor. He is the twin brother of Sidney Casal, the chief director at Caduceus USA. Yes, she's adorable. What's her name? Her name is Kari. Oh, she's such a cute little cutie. I'm going to be alright if I hold her for a minute. Go right ahead. Oh, she's so tiny. Angie! Angie, I get to hold her next. If she grows up to look like Dr. Myers, then she'll be very beautiful. And if she looks like me, Derek, what then, huh? Huh? Uh, well, then she'll be quite handsome. Uh, I mean... Hmm, she's a fine child, Dr. Casal. You got that, huh? Oh, Director Hoffman, when did you... I was just passing by when I heard all the commotion in here. Oh, sorry for dropping in so suddenly. Sybil and I just happened to have the same day off, so I wanted to surprise everyone. Well, it's always good to see you two. Considering our occupations, I understand how hard it can be to make personal appointments. Anyway, let's have a look at her. Ah, she's darling. Hey! Oh, look, Kari, it's big Grandpa Hoffman. Leslie. Well, you certainly did come through with a surprise. Well, we had no idea you were having a baby. You can say that again. You didn't have to keep it all under wraps. I'm sorry. It's not like we were trying to be secretive about it. We've just been so busy that we didn't have time to tell anyone, right? Yes, exactly. We have an emergency. There's been a bad accident on the 505 freeway. There was a collision between a bus and at least a dozen cars. Reports are saying, are saying many are injured. The nearby emergency rooms can't handle all the patients, so they're requesting our support. Several patients need immediate attention. We'll be, we'll be here any minute. What? But, uh, all right, then. Let's hurry. We need to prep the ORs. Yes, sir. This is gonna get hectic. Let's get going, Leslie. Right away. I'm sorry something like this had to happen during your visit. Oh no, this kind of thing happens every day for people like us. We completely understand. But, Director Hoffman, would it be easier on everyone if you had extra help? You've got two doctors here with nothing to do, you know. Well... I still hesitate to ask, but if you're willing, we could certainly use your help. We'd be happy to. Let's get to the ER, Sybil. Right away. Oh, would it be alright then if we leave Kari with you, sir? Well... Of course. Thank you. Well then, let's go. Oh, there, there now. Don't cry. <coughs> womp womp. Alright, let's do this. We'll be performing an immediate operation on a victim of a car accident. The patient wasn't wearing her seatbelt. Her entire upper torso was thrown through the windshield. Her chest took the majority of the damage, and she has lacerations on her right lung. Glass shards have pierced her lung. She's in critical condition. There are two objectives in this operation. Treat the lacerations on the right lung. Extract the glass shards. We'll have to operate quickly. 
Thank you very much for helping us with the anesthesia, Dr. Dr. Casal. My pleasure. It's been a while since I, had it, since I worked with the two of you. I'm ready to go. Great. We're counting on you. Derek. Derek, we've got more patients coming. Operate quickly, but don't sacrifice precision. Understood. We'll begin the procedure. Let's begin the operation. This should be uh, familiar ground for uh, uh, for all of us here. Just take out the foreign objects. Uh, suture up what we can. Now we make the incision. Look. And I can see some hemorrhaging in there too, so that'll be fun, won't it? Very careful when pulling out the glass shards because uh, they all have different shapes. Oops. Use the ultrasound. Yeah, did I mention fun? There we go. Just gotta do it slowly. That wasn't so bad then. For some reason, I remember that being a, a little worse. Operation complete. Now, Derek. And everything went smoothly on their ends as well. Good. Good, 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 good. That's another S rank. Um. Ooh, we got through that somehow. Yes, we would have come up short-handed if it had only been our regular staff here. And we have the whole Casal family to thank for their help. It was no problem. We know how it is. I don't even remember how many people I treated. Man, I haven't worked that hard in a while. Yeah, I'm pretty tired, too. Hmm? Do I hear crying? Is that little Kari? Oh my, she's still with Dr. Hoffman. We better get back, Sybil. Right. Hey. It's nice seeing those two. They seem to get along well. You're right, they're great. And I think the new addition to the family is making them happy. Yeah, but enough about them. How's it going for you guys, Derek? What? W what are you talking about? Oh, come on, don't play dumb. I mean, you and Angie. It's really about time you cleared things up for everyone. Oh, come on, knock it off. Are you blushing, Derek? Oh, so it's true then. Jeez. Of course not. That would never, ever happen. Whoa, denied. First of all, Dr. Stiles has had his head in the clouds lately. You know, being called a master surgeon, getting pampered and praised by everyone around him. Even making media interviews, this is ridiculous partnership with Acropolis is first priority. Have you forgotten what's most important about your job, Dr. Stiles? For us to... to... that would never happen! Angie? What do you expect? You haven't been acting like a professional at all lately. We're dealing with people's lives here. Don't ever forget that. Ouch. Well, hate to hate to be the bearer of bad news, but things are only going to get more difficult from here. So, 
We'll see how that goes next time.